This video is brought to you by Sim720. Hey guys, Tarek Mariface here. Welcome to the third multi-engine tutorial. So instead of promoting Sim720 in the beginning, I'm going to do it at the end in a sort of showcase videos compilations I did last time. Just remember that Sim720 are awesome guys who are way underappreciated and that you can buy some of their stuff on their store at Sim720, flysim720.co.uk and that you can get a 10% discount by using the code at the end of this video. So let's get cracking with the multi engine class rating. Okay, so we're in the, in the flight deck, the cockpit. <clears throat> I'm not going to bother doing the speed tapes because we're going to reset the flight a lot. Uh, because today we'll be doing engine failures during takeoff. We're going to be doing the different engine failures, different phases for engine failures, and we'll be doing engine failures on approach, visual approaches, obviously, as we're doing VFR. So the airfield is 400 feet, so we, uh, it's 340. We round that up to 400 to get 1,400 for the traffic pattern altitude. But we won't be doing uh, much circuits anyhow. So we're going to run a 24, and we're going to go ahead and experience an engine failure prior to rotation. This is, this is very similar to any engine failure experience prior to rotation, except remember, we have two engines, so if one of them fails, we're going to have asymmetry and the aircraft is going to start yawing. So you need to be quite active in correcting that. And it's going to be very messy, but as long as you stay on the runway and you stop the aircraft on time, everything will be fine. Okay, so rotation speed is, as always, 76 knots. So if we experience an engine failure, as we will, prior to 76 knots, we're going to stop. And this is despite what's written on the speed tape with a rotation speed of 60 knots, which is absolutely crazy. There's no way we could take off with landing flaps, well, with clean flaps, flaps up, basically. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start applying, applying power and do the takeoff as we normally would. So, power set, engine instruments checked, and airspeeds alive. Try and maintain the runway heading. Try and stay in center line as much as possible as you usually do. Sometimes we don't, we mess up and that's okay. And engine has failed, so we bring back the throttle and we control the aircraft and then we can start applying the brakes. So you see immediately the engine, the aircraft starts to yaw to the left. So that means it's probably the left engine that's failed and look at that left engine that's stopping. And we can stop and then we declare an emergency, we declare, say stopping, stopping on the radio. And if next, we don't even need to give our call sign, just stopping, stopping will do as, it, as they know there's a person on the runway who's stopping. And then with that we can follow on ground emergency procedures which we will look at on our final engine failure exercise of the day. Now let's have a look at what happens when your engine fails right after takeoff with sufficient runway available and the and the gear still down. Okay so this time we're going to experience an engine failure after rotation obviously but with the gear still down and sufficient runway available. So I've planned the engine failure to occur in not very long. Uh, we're going to start applying power now. Okay, power is set, engine instruments checked, and the airspeed's alive. Normal takeoff as you normally do. And rotate. Engines failed, three greens checked, power idle, and reland, and apply brakes. We might have to use some of the stop wave, but that's okay. But this is a very limited airfield in terms of relanding, but it's absolutely doable to have to use all the brakes. And there you go, we've used the stop wave. And now with the way that the aircraft yawed, I'd say it's the right engine that's failed, and it is. So that's it. So slightly different. So you can actually reland after rotation with these small aircraft, assuming you have enough runway available. So it's always good to check uh, if you would, because if we did Catalina the other day, that certainly wouldn't have been a long enough runway to reland on. 
So now we're going to look at the situation where you don't have enough room to reland. So it's after rotation, engine fails with the gear already up or insufficient runway available. Okay, so we're now going to experience an engine failure after rotation with the gear already up. So again, I'm going to do a normal takeoff, and this is going to be more similar to what we saw in the last lessons during the climb out. We're going to make sure that we clean up, that we've got sufficient airspeed. Uh, engine is checks checked, airspeed is alive. And we're going to fly the aircraft and then diagnose which engine. Oh, that was interesting. Which engine has failed? Okay. 76, rotate. There you go. And rotate, lower the nose so we can see over the hood. And positive rate. Gear up selected. And the engine has failed, so we level off straight away. Keep the power full. And check. Gear up, flaps up, checked. And we fly the aircraft. And let's go ahead and click on this to have the runway heading. It's a little off, but we can use this runway heading. So now we've got control of the aircraft, we've got the altitude we want. We can go ahead and start with the diagnosis. So, left leg, dead leg, verify left throttle. Nothing has happened, so the left engine has failed. Okay, so left engine master off, left fuel, left alternator off, and left fuel cut off. And there you go. And now we can continue the climb to a safe altitude, minimum safety altitude if you're um, if you're flying IFR or just a normal traffic pattern altitude, because we're now going to declare a mayday. Now, if you're flying that low, you don't actually need to secure, but obviously. Since Alabeo won't feather their aircraft before you secure, you actually need to in this case. So there you go, we're aiming for 85 knots, and now we can start our turn inbound for the traffic pattern, and we can climb up to the traffic pattern altitude. And then you just follow a visual circuit to land back at the airfield, and we're not going to do the whole thing, there's just no point. Right now we're just going to look at engine failures on final approach and on the downwind leg as well. Okay, so we're about to experience, there you go, the engine failure happened a little more suddenly than I thought. So we're in downwind and we just experienced the engine failure. So first things first, we maintain the heading and altitude and we're here downwind from runway 24. So we maintain the heading and altitude and then we're going to identify the left leg, dead leg, verify left throttle, left engine has failed, left engine master off, left alternator off and left fuel cut off. So obviously in the aircraft you don't need to do all these extra steps. You don't need to secure, you just need to you just need to um, to feather, but obviously it doesn't work here. Because to feather you actually need to secure it in the Alabeo D forty two. So what we're gonna do now is instead of using flaps approach once we're threshold of the runway, we're gonna do the same thing as we normally do, give uh, forty percent power and then gear down. And then we're gonna leave the flaps for approach only on the final lay on when we're on final and uh, we don't use flaps landing at all so that was very quick so with practice you can accelerate that process of uh, of detecting the engine fail and I really don't recommend using uh, using rudder trim simply because uh, when you level off and you reduce power it's gonna then all of a sudden you're gonna have a yaw in the opposite direction okay so we're past the threshold so 40 so Reduce 30, 40 percent power, and you use less less right rudder as we reduce that. Speed check, gear down, and we still maintain those 100 knots. Then we start turning inbound, and we care be careful with that high level obstacle right there, which is barely visible. And we can add a little bit of power since there's all this terrain in front of the of the airfield. So we can add a little bit of power and trim up. the A42, the ball goes all over the place. It's really difficult not to let it do that. So I'm, f I'm on full power right now because we're below 100 knots, but that's alright. So as you can see, we're probably going to overshoot the runway. Oh, probably not. We'll be alright. So I'm on full power here, 
and I'm still below 100 knots. So that's probably because we're, we're heavy. We've got four passengers, full fuel tanks, and we're actually above uh, the, the max takeoff and max landing mass right now because FSX just defaults it into that, and I keep forgetting to change it when I reset the flight. However, uh, you will have better performance if you are a little lighter as you should be. So there you go, we're arriving on final. And only on short final we're going to go ahead and bring flaps approach down. So there you go, we're a little low, but we can quickly catch a profile. And now we're high according to the Pappy. Okay, we can reduce powers, we're very high on speed, and we're on final, so speed check, flaps and pros set, and as I reduce the, thro the throttle, I will do not need that amount, that foot. So I added too much uh, power at the end, so now I'm catching up that airspeed loss. So, add some power, to make sure we're still on 90 and not below, and then we reduce completely. And we land. So you have to be very active on the rudders. And then we touch down, and that's perfect. So I added you I left that 100% power for far too long. And don't worry too much if you land off center line when you got an engine failure. Obviously, it's better to do so. But it's not a big deal. So there you go. Then you stop and you do what you need to, and that kind of stuff. All right. So we've dealt with the with the engine failing on the downwind leg, or when you're pro you've already failed and you're approaching the airport, and you're doing a visual circuit, you know, not to leave, not to use any flaps until you're on final. So now we're going to go ahead and look at what happens when the engine fails when you're in the descent to the runway, uh, both on a, on a normal final and a short final. So the engine's going to fail sometime in the next minute, and we're on final for runway. 2-4 just like before. Uh, we're set up for landing, gear is down and flaps are down as well. And we're a little further out than we would be for this setting, but I decided that I just wanted to see if we could get this engine to fail before we reach final, because it's been a few times I've been trying this, or even short final. Um, and fingers crossed that we reach there, because we're already halfway through the timer. Zero to one minutes is when the engine should start failing. It's your short final engine failure. I'll take that if that. Oh, there you go. Engines failed. 70% power straight away. And then right engine, right like dead leg. So right now it's too late. So this is a short final engine failure. So all you do is you continue the approach and just make sure that the airspeed is sufficient. We want 90 knots. Now we can start reducing power. So the first reaction to an engine failure, especially on final, is to increase that power to at least 70%. And then we land. So that was a short final engine failure. And be careful when you reduce throttle to reduce that that off the correcting rudder, because otherwise uh, the plane's going to go in the complete opposite direction that you're that you're putting rudder into, or rather it's going to go way into the, the direction you're putting rudder into, because you no longer need that correction when you bring uh, throttles idle. Okay, so that was a short final correction. So we're going to go ahead and see what happens when you get when you're doing the approach and hold on yeah when you're doing the approach and the engine fails when you've got enough time to diagnose the issue okay so the engine has failed so immediately put 70% power and I've set it so the engine fails straight away because it's difficult to time it properly so now we've got plenty of time to diagnose the problem once we've controlled the aircraft and we continue our descent we can go ahead we're in, we're in landing configuration we can, instead of doing just engine master off for left, right leg, dead leg, verify right throttle, then normally just do right engine master off. But now, because it doesn't auto feather as it should, you have to do the whole procedure. Way there you go, too much rudder, as you normally do. And then, of course, don't forget the final check, three greens, and flaps approach, clear to land, blah, blah, blah. But you 
should do at all times. And for flaps approach, we want 90 knots approach speed over the threshold. There you go. So you have to do the whole thing, where normally you should only need to switch the engine master off. However, for some reason, we have to do the whole procedure again. There you go. And then you just do a normal landing, and don't forget to reduce the amount of rudder you use as you bring throttle idle because you no longer have that asymmetric thrust. And there you go. And we stop the aircraft on the runway again, not following procedures. It's good to let the aircraft slow down and before gently applying brakes a little bit and every now and again because the brakes in the day 42 have a tendency to overheat. Once you stop, you can go ahead and put the parking brake on and we can follow the on-ground emergency procedures. So, engine master's off, fuel cut off, contact ACC, mayday, 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 electric master off, and evacuate. And there you go, so we've done all the emergencies in terms of engine failures and that kind of stuff. So, um, you can do single engine circuits if you want, they're not particularly fun, but there you have it. We now know all the emergencies that we would face in the, the multi-engine. So, in reality, the multi-engine is six hours of flying. Uh, however, we're done. We've covered all the important stuff. So that's it for the multi-engine. We will look a little bit at the DA-42 in particular. The one thing we're going to look at is the autopilot, because it's a little bit wonky. So we're going to use one more of Sim 720's airports just to have a look at the autopilot and the G1000 quickly on very superficially just so you can have an idea of how it works but that's it for now um, again this was McLillan uh, from Sim 720 it's a US airport uh, covers 466 acres got the asphalt runway of 1493 meters and uh, it's in California San Diego so uh, I'm going to show you a nice clip reel of this airport with all the cool features it has. And uh, on the screen, I will display the code for you to use at checkout on the Sim720 uh, website. You get 10% off. So I highly recommend it. I love Sim720 because this is Orbex level quality stuff without affecting performance. That's the beauty of it. That's That's what's incredible about their scenery. They've got incredible scenery and barely affects performance. So anyhow, I'm Tarek Maryface. I'll see you guys ne next time and happy flying.